Upheaval, Breaking Point, Chapter 27, Monarchs The morning after the initial woven rush greeted Bastion City with a biting cold wind. Twilight Sparkle found herself shivering on her bed. She sat up with a start and looked around. The rest of her friends were already up and closed. Spike sat by one corner, breathing a steady stream of green flame on his claws to warm himself up. Good morning, Twilight, he said. Twilight looked out a window to find snow falling on the streets. I thought winter was a week or two away, she said. It was, Vanguard Clash answered from the doorway. As always, he was already wearing his barding. Scarlet Rabbit was hovering in mid-air next to him. Prepare yourselves quickly. This snow is a very bad omen. He went ahead with Scarlet, leaving Twilight and her friends to ponder on what he said. A bad omen? Rainbow Dash asked. What's he talking about? Dunno, Applejack said. They're expecting us by the walls anyway. The others looked at Applejack. Like Vanguard, she was already in her bodding and tramplers, ready for another day's duty. Her gear was clean and carefully polished once again, polished with spit, much to Rarity's disgust. Most of them thought that it was because Applejack was proud of her bodding and wanted it to look as perfect as possible. Twilight guessed that there was more to it than that, however. She had seen Applejack desperately wiping off the blood that covered her bodding and knew that it wasn't just pride and necessity that fueled this cleanness. Applejack was the most heavily armored in their group, and the sight of her was a daunting one indeed. Her face and coat were barely visible between the gray plates of metal. While she wasn't as covered as Vanguard Clash, there were few ways to recognize her. The glimpse of green past her champron, her blonde tail, and the occasional sight of her orange coat. There was one thing that really made Applejack stand out, however. She kept her head where it always was. The effect was a little silly, but it helped keep some of her appearance familiarity. It's too cold for flying into a fight, Rainbow Dash said. She flapped her wings a few times to get some blood circulating. Like Applejack, she was also wearing her barding. A set of leather ones, much to the discomfort of the others, especially Fluttershy. Tell me about it, Rarity added. It's going to be a pain starting up Hammer Chain's forge like this. I hear a lot of complaining, but you look raring to go, R.D., Applejack said. Of course, Rainbow Dash answered with a grin. I still have to make a name for myself. She looked over to Twilight, who had just finished putting on her mage coat. Twilight hears the talk of the recruits. Every pony is impressed by how she fireballs at Siege Tower. I can't fall behind that. Every pony stopped and fell silent after Rainbow Dash said those words. I didn't cast that spell to impress any pony, Rainbow Dash. Twilight said quietly. She pressed her lips together tightly. The reminder alone brought a whiff of burnt flesh to her nose and the echo of a dying wolven's howl to her ears. There were no words said, but Rainbow Dash took a few steps back as if she was expecting them to attack her. She looked around for allies until her eyes settled on Applejack. Hey, Applejack, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure the ponies in your platoon are still all over how awesome Twilight was. Applejack didn't meet Rainbow's gaze. So there ain't a contest, R.D., she said. And if it was, I ain't hankering to be called Best Woven Killer any time soon. Rainbow Dash looked around again to see if any pony at all was even on the same page as her. No pony met her gaze. She cringed for a moment, then straightened herself. Her eyes went from guilty and nervous to hard and proud. Well, I am, she said. Her voice rose as she went on. Best Wolven Killer sounds like an awesome title to have. Twilight's eyes widened at hearing this. Rainbow Dash? It's you girls I don't understand. Why are all of you moping over having to kill Wolven? They're trying to kill and eat all of us. It's not that simple, Twilight said. Oh, yeah? Rainbow retorted. Yesterday, one of the recruits I was flying with got shot down on our way back. The wolven jumped on her as soon as she hit the ground. I saw one of them run off with her wing in its mouth. Another one carried off a leg so it didn't have to share with the rest of them. Her voice lowered. 
They're monsters, and I don't feel bad about killing them at all. In fact, I'm glad to be able to fight and kill these things. She held her crossbow and made her way to the door. Now I'm going to get some more practice, so I can kill even more of them. You can all sit here and feel sorry for monsters. Before any pony else could respond to that, Rainbow Dash had already flown off. Twilight could only look worriedly towards Rainbow Dash's direction. Seeing my subjects become more like them. Twilight drew her cloak around her tighter. The cold of the barrier lands seemed aggressively chilling, as if the air itself took delight in stealing warmth from others. She had been through many winters, but this one filled her with foreboding. Warden Tarnation is wrong with that mare, Applejack snapped. She didn't need to blow up like that. Twilight let out a sigh. I hope we can talk about it later. I have to go too. They're expecting me by the walls. Same here, Applejack said. And I as well, Rarity said. Well, not by the walls, but you understand. She joined the two by the door. That's it? Pinkie Pie asked. We haven't been spending a lot of time together these days. It can't be helped, Pinky, Twilight said. All of us now have duties to attend to. I'm sure even you're expected to be at the kitchen first thing in the morning. That's true, Pinky mumbled. She looked at the floor for a moment before brightening up. I know, we should plan some kind of party when all of us don't have any duty. How about after we drive the wolven from the city, Twilight suggested. Victory celebration, Applejack added. I like the sound of that. Then it's settled. Pinky said. I'll tell the others in the kitchens. They'll love it. She ran out of the door ahead of them. Twilight looked over the room. With Pinky gone, that left just Spike. Where's Fluttershy? She asked. She was out of here before you even woke up, Applejack said. She looked pretty determined to get back to work. Makes me wonder what happened yesterday. I suppose Fluttershy being determined should count as good news, Twilight said. Are you going to be all right, Spike? I'll be fine, Spike answered. This time I'm going to make it to Hammer Chain's Smizzy to help out. Come along then, Spike, Rarity said. Your breath should be handy when it comes to lighting that forge. Spike didn't bother hiding his excitement when hopping on her back as she trotted out. So, Twilight, Applejack said. Hmm? No offense, but you have been pretty awesome lately. Is it true that you've got special operations ponies talking to you? What? Of course not. I wasn't that good. A lot of ponies fought hard during yesterday's battle. Really? Applejack raised an eyebrow. No invitations? You walked in with Vanguard last night. Didn't he say he needed a unicorn mage in his squad? He didn't bring that up at all, Twilight insisted. Applejack shrugged in response. Oh well, see you later then, Twilight. Twilight watched Applejack walk off before heading for her post. Snow continued to fall steadily, covering Bastion City in a thin carpet of white. As she walked through the streets, she noticed the expressions on the other ponies, noting that she wasn't the only one who found the snow foreboding. Some of them looked outright frightened. They saw something in this change of weather that she didn't. Recruit Sparkle! One of the unicorns in Twilight's unit called out to her from atop the walls. We're in boulder catching duty for this morning, remember? Get to your position! As soon as she reached the top of the wall, Twilight headed over to her partners by one part of the wall. Mage Captain Owlside had instructed them yesterday about boulder catching. Unicorn Magi were positioned all along the walls to catch the boulders hurled by the woven catapults with their telekinesis. They were not required to stop the boulders from hitting the walls, but they should be able to slow each boulder down with their combined efforts, weakening its impact and saving the walls from too much structural damage. It was a dangerous task, as outside was quick to warn them. The danger of being squashed by an errant boulder was a real one, as was getting sniped by a woven boulder. Twilight gradually grew accustomed to watching out for boulders and snipers while working with two other unicorn magi to slow each catapult shot. How easily she was able to slip into a rhythm, however, disturbed her a bit. The woven army did not seem particularly devoted into their catapult firing. She could also hear a steady beating of drums coming from their camp, as well as a constant howling. What was going on? I don't like this one bit, she heard outside growls as he walked past her. 
What are those muds up to? The snow is making me think that. Before Owlside could finish, the steady drums and howling erupted into a frenzied pace. A chilling wind picked up and rose to a howl of its own. Twilight drew her cloak around her even tighter. Torado's blazing mane, it's true! One of the unicorns near Twilight whimpered. He's here! Before Twilight could look at whoever had spoken, a wave of fear washed over her like a torrent of ice-cold water. She fell to her knees, her teeth chattering and her heart racing. There was something out there, some feral, primal thing just beyond the walls and the gathered woven, and it was coming closer. She forced her knees to unbend and stand. Each inch was a desperate uphill battle, but she made it. Then she looked around. The other ponies by the walls were also affected. Most of the recruits were cowering, while the older veterans were rooted to the spot despite holding up a little better. She looked over the ramparts to get a better look. The wind had somehow worked itself up into a blizzard. It was almost impossible to see anything on the plain. All she could see were dark shapes where the woven had gathered. She noticed that they had parted to let something from their rear lines through. She squinted and tried to see, but all she saw was an enormous silhouette. On another section of the northern walls, Rainbow Dash had fallen flat on her belly, while the wind howled all around her. An unnatural fear was crushing her heart with cold, unrelenting fingers. She looked around to see that many ponies had also fallen to the ground in a shivering panic. "'Get up, Rainbow Dash!' Tailwind sat just beside her. Even Tailwind's voice was subdued and difficult to make out from the fierce wind. At least catch a glimpse of the enemy! Rainbow picked herself up and used the rampart's latch to keep herself standing. She was so terrified that she hardly felt the physical cold of the snowstorm. She looked at the plains below to see what was causing this. Out on the plains, a lone, enormous figure had walked past the woven front lines. Rainbow could barely make anything out, but the shape and outline told her that it was a woven. That realization alone terrified her further. This was a giant woven. From the size and distance it had to be at least twenty feet tall. It stopped within crossbow range, but no pony from the walls was taking a shot. The wind would have made it impossible, but there was no pony among them even willing to try. The giant woven looked up. Rainbow felt as if her heart had stopped when she caught the giant woven's gaze. A lone, red glowing eye seemed to look at her, look straight through her. She found herself gasping for air. The cold raked her lungs with each breath. All she could manage were short gasps. It was just less than an hour ago when she was talking about killing woven. Now she seemed so insignificant to the might of their army. What was that monster? All it needed to do was look at her, and she was half dead from fear. There's no fighting that thing. No walls or weapons were even going to slow it down. The city was doomed, and every pony within was going to be torn to pieces and eaten. But what is that? Rainbow managed to croak out. She doubted that any pony even heard her, but Tailwind turned around to answer. Rainbow could tell that Tailwind was also feeling the incredible, crushing fear that the monster just below was radiating. The King of Wolvengard, Tailwind answered. Fenrir, the raving fangs of winter. As if to punctuate Tailwind's answer, the monster let out a long, dolorous howl that put even the ferocious wind to shame. Rainbow felt herself blacking out from terror. The world grew dim and the howling seemed to lessen in volume. A clarion call of a neigh brought her back to consciousness at the very last moment. Rainbow's eyes flickered wide open and her ears perked up. What was that melodious uplifting neigh? The oppressive fear melted away and she was able to stand up with no problem. Amazed cries around her made it clear that the other ponies felt the same way. She looked towards where the sound had come from and was greeted by the impressive sight of a mighty grey alicorn hovering just past the inner side of the walls. She recognized the coat and the blazing mane. This was Prince Terado. She had only seen him once and only through a magical image. 
to actually see him was, she couldn't find the words. Even the wind seemed at awe before the prince of Equestria. It had died down to a steady breeze. Our prince is here, one of the pegasi along the walls cheered. All hail our prince. All hail Prince Terado. Hail the prince of the earth. Prince Terado answered the cheers with a grim smile and a nod before flying past the walls to land just in front of Fenrir. Princess Luna followed suit and accompanied him. Now that the snowstorm had stopped, Rainbow finally caught a good view of King Fenrir. The King of Wolvengard was a truly massive beast. He dwarfed even Prince Terado, and that was without having to raise himself on his haunches. His fur was a very dark grey, almost black, and it did little to hide the powerful muscles along his neck, shoulders and flanks. His enormous skizing claws dug deep into the ground in anticipation. He had kept his jaws closed until Terado and Luna approached. Afterwards, he let them hang open. Wicked, curving fangs lined his mouth, each one white and razor-sharp. Salvia dripped from his jaws and fell on the ground. Whenever he let out a breath, a great cloud of whiteness escaped from his nostrils. What held Rainbow's gaze, however, was his eye. King Fenrir glared at the world through a single, bright red eye. His left eye was missing, and the blackness of the empty socket seemed to go on forever. Rainbow held her breath as Terado and Luna approached until they were a few feet away from Fenrir. Was there going to be a fight? Was the fate of the siege going to be decided by combat between their rulers? Standing so close to his ancient foe, Terado felt a little nostalgic. It had been so long since he had confronted Fenrir like this. Ever since the pact, the two of them had barely seen each other. The thought of missing the giant woven was amusing. "'Why are you here, Fenrir?' he asked. Fenrir's gaze quickly turned from Terado to Luna. He lowered his face and sniffed at her direction, elicting a shudder of disgust from her. "'It's been a long time since I've caught fair Luna's scent,' he answered. His voice was a deep, rasping tone, followed by what sounded like a frigid, howling wind. "'A year without it is painful enough, but cursed Celestia tortures me with a thousand. After so long I had to see for myself when I caught the scent once more. "'You came all the way here and frightened my ponies for a smell?' Tirado asked. He took a sniff towards Luna's direction. It's not that fantastic. Big brother, Luna said. You understand nothing, Fenrir growled. Watch your slobber, Terado growled in return. And stop boring me with your infatuation. Why come here yourself? Do you plan on breaking our pact? Let us make a new pact, Fenrir said. Your legion is on the defense, and my army is on the rise. Surely you will listen. Let us make a new pact while your eldest sister is not here to impose her will. Make your case, then, Terado replied cautiously. What kind of pact are you proposing? Fenrir focused on Terado shrewdly. Give me fair Luna as my bride, and I will leave. All of us will leave. Luna isn't mine to give. Terado answered. If that's all your new pact is... Wait! Luna interrupted. Both Terado and Fenrir looked towards her. She swallowed and stepped forward. If I go with you, do you promise to never attack Equestria? No woven will so much as take a single step into this land so long as you remain with me, Fenrir replied. His growling voice could barely contain his eagerness. Terado tensed. It looked like Fenrir might go so far as to rush her if he couldn't control himself. He drew Luna aside and whispered to her harshly. "'What are you doing?' he asked. "'Are you seriously considering marrying him?' "'If it means putting a stop to centuries of war, yes.' "'Celestia will not allow this, and that means I can't allow it either.' "'I am a princess of equal standing to both of you. "'I'll decide for myself what I can and can't do. "'My only regret will be if it turns out that I could have done this at the start.' "'Terado let out a sigh. "'Once more he had mixed feelings about Luna's newfound assertiveness. 
"'You used to be terrified of being so much as a hundred miles of him,' he said. "'That was a long time ago. I can do this, big brother.' "'What is this whispering about?' Fenrir growled. "'Are the two of you going to plot right before me?' Luna took another step forward, so that she was right before Fenrir. The smell of his breath and the sight of his gaping maw sent a shudder through her, but she held firm. "'I will be your bride, King Fenrir,' she said, "'if you promise that you and your woven will never again be a threat to Equestria.' "'I will,' Fenrir said. He looked ready to pounce on her, but Torado took a step forward as a warning. "'It will be part of our wedding vows in woven guard.' "'Then—' Before Luna could continue, Fenrir's ears perked up. With a snarl he jumped to the side as a massive beam of pure white light struck the ground where he was. The fallen snow vaporized on contact, and the ground charred and melted into red-hot goo. Aghast, both Terado and Luna looked to where the beam had come from. Their gazes went directly towards Bastion City. The beam had come from one of the taller buildings. Terado recognized the spell as a simple light beam magnified to suit the power of only one caster he knew who favored it. Luna seemed to recognize it as well. To their misfortune, so did Fenrir. His sight caught a figure of what seemed to be Celestia standing on the roof. He recognized the mane and the wings, but something was wrong. Treachery! Fenrir snarled. Cursed Celestia hides her scent, then hides behind her younger sister to assassinate me. Coward! That's not true, Tirado shouted. Calm down, Fenrir. The entire woven army was in an uproar, and the ponies along the wall followed suit. Your sister is full of guile and filth, Tirado, Fenrir snarled. I will honor our pact for the shred of honor that you have, but there will be no more negotiations. I will kill you and Celestia. It is the only way I can be sure that Luna is not a trap. Wait, Tirado called after the giant woven. This is a mistake. It was too late, however. Fenrir had rejoined his army, dodging and weaving to avoid any more light blasts. Moon Shadow! Tirado heard Fenrir bellow. Luna could only look on, stunned. Damn! Tirado struck the ground with a hoof, sending shockwaves in all directions. He started to fly back to the city. When Luna delayed in following him, he shouted after her. Come on! Twilight Sparkle caught a good look at the powerful blast of light as it streaked past her and towards King Fenrir. Amidst the confusion, her first reaction was to trace the spell's source. To her horrified surprise, she saw what appeared to be Princess Celestia standing on top of one of the buildings. Realizing what the blast had caused, Twilight concentrated on a teleportation spell. The distance from the top of the wall to the building was great, but she had to reach that spot before the princess left. A flash of purple light enveloped her and, in a second, she was standing on the building's rooftop. I had to do it, Twilight Sparkle, she had Celestia's voice say. Luna was going to marry that monster, and Torado was going to go along with it. Twilight grit her teeth and tried to steady both her breathing and her legs. The teleportation and the magical drift had all but drained her completely. Drop the act, she snarled. I've known the princess far too long to be fooled by it. Who are you? Why did you do this? Clever, as expected of Celestia's favorite pupil. Celestia's voice changed in the middle of the sentence into a softer, slighter, deeper pitch. The image of a regal white alicorn with a flowing, multicolored mane dissolved into mist. Twilight squinted to get a good look, but to no avail. That was an impressive teleportation, Twilight Sparkle, some pony said. Twilight felt a chill run down her spine as she heard it. But you have overexerted yourself and underestimated the potential enemy that awaited you at your destination. If I attack you right now, I can kill you with ease, then drink your life at my leisure. Twilight tried to wave the mist away with a hoof. Who are you? she asked again. She saw a glimpse of black within the mist as well as a hint of a shape. She was talking to a pony, a black-coated pony, 
The voice belonged to a mare, and the magic made it a unicorn. I'd hate to pluck such impressive talent before it has had a chance to bloom. I'll see you again. The black-coated unicorn mare said. The mist dissipated, but there was no pony on the roof besides Twilight. Twilight Sparkle! Twilight looked behind her to find both Prince Terado and Princess Luna landing on the roof. Where is she? Terado demanded. I know an impostor when I see one. She's gone, your highness. Twilight said. Who could have done this? Luna asked. And why? Terado walked over to the spot where Twilight had just seen the mysterious unicorn. He seemed to have noticed something on the ground and bent over to pick it up. It appeared to be a long strand of crimson. The sight of it seemed to plunge him into a shadow. I know who, Terado said softly, warily.